Hello, everyone, and welcome back in. This is episode number three of our look into the Rhodesian Bush Wars, of course, focusing upon the Unimog. But in this episode, well, we're going to set the Unimog aside, and we're going to be focusing on painting up some figures and getting a bit of a start. We'll build a tree here, or grow a tree, I guess, maybe the case may be, uh, to get ready for our diorama a little bit later on. Once I decided to go down this road of the Rhodesian Bush Wars theme, I, the first real challenge was to try to find some appropriate figures for this. Uh, not the easiest thing to do. But with a little bit of help from some friends and some of my Patreon, we were able to come up with a couple of figures here. I think they're going to suit the purpose just well. Yes, I understand. Technically, they're not exactly kitted out in the Rhodesian Standard Army uniforms here, but there was a lot of variation as well. And I think for our purposes, this is going to be fine. So the, the different figures, one came from Bravo 6, a great company. I've worked with those figures before, really like them. And the other one is from Tank. Again, I've worked with them before, but not, not recently. And it's got a great figure, nice expression. So let's pull this guy out of the box here from Tank. And as you can see from the box art, yep, this guy is ready to rumble. He looks... Uh, he looks ready to go for sure. He looks pretty... I guess I could say this on YouTube. Uh, pretty... pretty bad. So a couple things to kind of just keep in the back of your head here. Both of these figures were painted in basically the same manner, the same format, the same basic colors and things like that. I'll go back and forth a bit with these figures, uh, showing both processes as they go through. But just know that if you missed a step on one, it's probably shown on the other figure. But I'll go back and forth. First thing I needed to do when adding the head on the Bravo 6 figure, there is a definite seam line right there. It's a little Tamiya putty. just diluted a bit with some liquid cement just kind of fills in that gap there and I'll come back when in with just a little bit of sandpaper just to buff it out and and get that all nice and smoothed out and ready to go if you've been following any of my more recent videos especially the ones that I've concentrated on the figures I've kind of changed my process here and I'm going to follow that same process with just a little slight twist perhaps so the base coat I'm base coating everything in a white white base coat color here and then I started out trying to paint like a, just a wash or a glaze using blue colors and then the next project I thought well let's do a little bit of purple colors and for this project well I'm using magenta so it's kind of a combination of blues and reds and purples all together I guess that's what magenta color is but that's going to be my kind of my glaze color my foundation color for the skin tones for both of these figures so as I mentioned, these are these are truly glazes. They are highly thinned out using just water in this case. Highly thinned out paints here. Just a few brush strokes, let it kind of wash over the surface, allow that layer to dry, come back in, and I'll build up the color a little bit slowly here. But I'm not trying to paint the color. I'm not trying to paint these figures magenta and all the skin tones. That's not my point here. I'm just trying to kind of give a base color that will radiate through and it also pools the paints kind of pool and and gather in some of those recesses and crevices and those become some of my shadow colors now that i have the glazes applied i have a pretty decent roadmap pretty good visual roadmap as to where my highlights are and my shadows are now i can come back in and start accentuating i guess is the right word accentuating some of these highlights and shadow areas the first thing i I do anyway as I come back in and just hit all those highlights so this is a lighter we're starting to move to the flesh tones now so a lighter flesh tone color here and just picking out some of those areas where the glaze has washed off because it is a high point and the sunlight might hit it so we're talking again tops of the cheeks the forehead top of the nose bridge of the nose that kind of thing don't say I didn't warn you, this is going to be again one of these longer form videos where I'm just kind of letting the camera roll, we'll just kind of let the process unfold before our eyes. So let's put on some music and I'll jump back in in just a few minutes. <laughs>
So let's jump back in. This is our second fellow. This is our badass dude here. Same process, just starting with those glazes. Again, still using the magenta color. Now this fellow, he presented a little bit of a challenge because he's got a lot of skin showing and that, that magenta, that really kind of made him look kind of pink and purpley. And I think I want to go for something that's a little bit more tanned in appearance here, especially under that Rhodesian sun. So just a few washes or glazes again of a skin tone, a little darker medium brown skin tone, happens to be cork, kind of changes the complexion a bit. Now I can come back in and start accentuating those high points as we did on the first figure. Now the skin tones are really starting to come together and I can kind of start moving the focus of my painting outwards. So starting in the middle here, we're against his bare chest. Now we can start moving to his clothing and especially at this point, let's see if we can take care of those machine gun belts strapped around his neck. Give him a quick wash of just a dark color and then I thought, well, let's try for the brass shells. Let's see if these pins, what they, they can do on this. So decided just to basically draw the metallic brass color onto here and that's a pretty easy and effective way to recreate some brass effects. A moment to say thank you to my Patreon. Those are the names that you see scrolling across your screen at the moment, and it's through their support that this channel is possible. If you enjoy this channel and its content, please consider joining Patreon and help us support. In exchange, early viewing of these videos, special Patreon-only videos, work-in-progress photographs, a Discord server for chats and sharing our work, please consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you. We'll come back and finish up these figures in a little while, but until then, as I mentioned, we're gonna be putting this together onto some sort of a scene or a vignette or something like that. And so I started doing some searching. I've never been to Africa, so all my knowledge is basically from Mr. Google. But they came across these trees, which tend to be, looks to my, by my appearances, to be fairly typical of this region. And I thought that would be a really nice backdrop. So, of course, there's nothing like this on the market, so that means that we're gonna have to grow our own tree. Well, in the scale modeling world, we don't use dirt nor water to grow our trees. We use wire. <laughs> well, in this case, we're going to make a ar wire armature to basically create or sculpt our tree. So these first pieces of wire, this is florist wire. You can get these at craft stores. It's easy to bend. It's, it works great. You can twist it around. And this will become the basis of, of the entire tree itself. We'll just keep adding layer upon layer of this, twisting them together. And then I also have some of this nice soft uh, copper wire as well and we'll incorporate that into the armature as we go along here just kind of keep building it up and building it up until we finally have a shape and that's all we're looking for here right now is just the basic shape of these trees and now it's time to add some bulk and some texture to these trees and for that I'm going to turn to the magic sculpt and the reason I'm using magic sculpt say versus the sculpey is magic sculpt when it dries it is rock hard and the branches on this tree especially, they have quite a wingspan on them and they're fairly thin and could be, I guess, delicate. So I think that the Magic Sculpt will give it a little bit of extra structure so everything stays in place and the branches don't break or droop or something like that. And who knew that growing a tree using Magic Sculpt would be the same process as, say, making tarps. Roll out nice thin layers of the Magic Sculpt using baby powder so it doesn't stick and it's wrapping it around the tree, getting everything in to the right place and the right thickness, kind of pinching and pulling here and there. And then the next thing I want to do is just add some texture to the tree trunk itself. And what better way or easier way to do that than just grab some wood chips out of my blue bowl of good stuff and just simply press them in. And then finally, on these, the very tips of these branches, they're basically just single wires out there. Just, they're pretty spindly and I want to bulk those up a bit. So I'm just using Mod Podge here, which is basically diluted white glue. 
just washing that over the tops of these and then that white powder there yes it's not what you think it's uh, baking soda just sprinkling some of that over there gives it a nice texture and then once it dries i've got a little bit more a little bit more surface a little bit more bulk to these branches Painting the tree, well, that's a pretty simple process. First, give it just a overall base coat, just using the brush here, not even an airbrush of a dark gray. And then we'll come back in with lighter shades of gray and even tans and browns, just to start bringing out some of those nice textures and the details that we got earlier when we pressed in those wood chips into the magic sculpt. And of course, it wouldn't be an episode here if we didn't break out the oil paints for just, just a second here. A light wash overall just brings out a little bit of depth and richness in the colors. Of course, the next challenge was to create the foliage on the trees, and I had a couple of ideas here. And then I stumbled across these wildflowers that I've had in this package for, gosh, 10 or maybe 15 years. And I haven't really used them, but I was looking at them going like, you know what, if I paint these up and apply them to these branches, I think this will give me the look, the appearance of those trees that I'm looking for. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to paint up some of these branches here, some of these dried flowers, and we'll start attaching them to the tree. Actually, as it starts to come together, I'm fairly pleased with the results adding this foliage to it. I think this tree looks rather convincing. However, if there's one downfall with these dried leaves, and again, they've, I've had them forever, is that they're very, very fragile. So they tended to want to drop off or break. And so I thought if I spray a matte coat overall, perhaps that will act as a glue and keep everything in place. We'll see. You may recall in the last episode that I talked about that, well, we're going to be composing a scene that I have figures and that I also had no idea of what the scene is going to end up looking like. Well, guess what? I still don't have any idea of what the scene, the final scene is going to look like. But we have some important components now starting to come together. We have our truck. Now we have a tree. And this allows me just to basically play with things and start to generate some ideas. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this method of let's just see how it turns out <laughs> as, as the best method on how to build scenes, but it tends to be oftentimes the way that it works out in my case. And so with that said, the most difficult challenge for me right now is just basically don't panic, you know, worrying that something's not going to come together or idea is not going to happen. Generally, it always does. Just going to have to kind of wait for it to materialize. Well, let's pull together some more of these elements for our scene here. Specifically, let's put the final touches on our figures. Now, with the Rhodesian Army, they had a very distinctive camouflage on their uniforms. It was called paintbrush or paint stroke, and basically it was broad bands of color that had these, basically looked like paintbrush strokes across. That's kind of the pattern of the camouflage. So the challenge here is to try to create or simulate something that looks like that. And so now that I'm moving towards the uniforms, I'm going to use basically the same process as I have with the flesh tones, and that is washes or filters, I guess you would call them, of the camouflage base color here. And then I'll come back in over the top of that, start adding the highlights and emphasizing some of those shadows. And then we'll come back in and start adding the camouflage pattern. <laughs> If you've had a keen eye up to this point, you'll notice that the very tip of the gun barrel that has been broken off already on this figure. And then as fate would have it, yes, I broke off the remaining part of his gun as well. <laughs> Luckily, I have all the pieces, so we'll be able to glue those back later on. 
I'm still working on two figures at the same time here. And that's really a very efficient process when it comes right down to it, because I can work on figure A, paint, do some paint work on that, set it aside, allow the paint to dry, pick up figure B, do some paint work on that one, and then pick up figure A and continue working. And now we'll get down to the camouflage pattern. And <laughs> this is literally just, I'm looking at photographs on my references here on the side here on my computer and just trying to make some sort of semblance of the pattern and represent it in this small scale here. First color on is the red-brown color, and this will be followed with a darker green color. Well, the figures are coming together and the bulk of the paintwork is complete. So now I, I'm feeling confident that maybe I can, if I'm careful, I can continue working on the figures without breaking this gun. So I want to go ahead and put the gun back together, especially before I lose all these parts here. So a few drops of super glue, just some careful manipulation here, trying to make sure that everything's nice and straight. Well, this for sure has been one of those busier, longer episodes, but we've got a lot accomplished on this one. Now we have our figures ready to go. I can start composing the scene with the figures, with the truck, and now a tree. And I've cut some foam, basically just rough sizing it here because I can make marks on it. I can stick my figures into the, into the foam. It just helps me in composition, kind of think my way through it. Maybe there's going to be a road. I'm actually kind of toying with the idea of maybe a water feature in this front corner here. Big question mark. We'll see where that goes in future episodes. But we'll have to stay in suspense because <laughs> we'll have to see where this goes in the next episode. If, if we add water or not and how the scene finally lays out. I've enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed painting these figures and, well, growing a tree from wire and magic sculpt. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you have enjoyed this episode, if you enjoy this channel, please hit that like and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to support this channel further, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is in the description below. Love to see you over there as well. And so that brings this episode to a wrap. So until the next time, guys, take care, and of course, happy modeling. See you soon.